I am very pleased to be able to introduce Raji Thomas. Raji is the CEO of portfolio company Sprinkler. Sprinkler has um, helped many enterprise customers in the Fortune 100 delight their customers. And this is one of the most important topics that I hear about from many enterprise customers today, the topic of customer obsession. So without any further words, I'd like to welcome to the stage Raji Thomas. So I'm told that half of this group are large companies and half other half is smaller startups, um, all affiliated one way or the other with Intel and Intel Capital. What if you could leave this conference tomorrow, go back to your companies, and just magically make all your customers happier? Not just that, what if you could go back tomorrow and just increase your company's revenue. Not just that, what if you could go back tomorrow and decrease your company's expenses? Not just that, if, what if you could go back tomorrow and just help your company manage risk like they've never done before? In your brain, you're going like, no way, right? That would make this conference really, really valuable. What would that do to your career if you're working for a company? What would that do to your company? And most importantly, what could that do to your customers? What if you could go back and start making your advertising a lot more effective? What if you could personalize advertising starting tomorrow? Advertising, by definition, is not very personalized. You're going to go, yeah, right, that's impossible, right? What if I said that's possible? What if I said one of the largest brands in America ran 8 million ad variants in a 90-day campaign? What if I said you could go back tomorrow and just know every one of your customers and prospects individually. You just could know everything about them, where they went to school, what they're doing this weekend, who they hang out with, what do they care about. You knew everything. You'd go, right, that's impossible, right? One of the largest tech companies in the world, great partner of Intel, who should be in this conference room, is doing just that. They've got 500 million customer and prospect profiles with complete data in their database as we speak. What if you could go back tomorrow and anticipate product issues? Not wait for the call center to blow up with inbound problems. What if you could anticipate? You're going, you get the routine, right? You're going, that's impossible. What if I said to you, Another large tech company, one of the largest PC manufacturers in the world, a great partner of Intel, is doing just that today, four to six weeks before any part of that company knows of a product issue, this team knows. And about 20 to 30 percent of the problems are now resolved before it hits the call center. What if I said to you, you could go back tomorrow and start mitigating and, and uh, averting PR crisis. What would your CMO say if you said that to him or her? It's so impossible, right? What if I said to you, one of the largest cosmetic companies in the world, headquartered out of Paris, detected 267 potential crises last year and managed and mitigated every one of them they didn't have a single major crisis that year. What if I said to you, you could go back tomorrow and you could just start running global marketing campaigns in real time, around the world, across all business units. And you go, impossible, right? What if I said to you, one of the largest shoe companies, shoe and apparel companies in the world just did that. 
they do that routinely in a campaign that most of you have experienced was probably one of the most amazing, interesting, fascinating campaigns of the last 12 months. What if I said to you that you could go back and magically come up with product ideas that would change your company's future? You go, yeah, right, that's impossible. But if I said to you one of the largest food and beverages company, one of the lar largest fast food companies in the world just did that. They came up with a product, introduced that on their menu, and reversed 14 quarters of same store decline using that innovation. What if I said to you that you could go back tomorrow and literally know about every single problem that every one of your retail stores have if you're a retailer or a manufacturer, if you have a franchise, if you're a hotel chain? This is exactly what many large retailers are doing and many large hotel companies. There's a large hotel company that makes every one of the decisions. They decide whether the person at the front desk should keep their job to whether they should spend $100 million of their capital expenses this year, all based on knowing this in real time. You go on like, dude, tell me how. <laughs> how do you turn this impossible into possible. It's not very complicated to understand. But most people don't do it or do it well. It starts with listening. There you go, what's the big deal? How many of you realize that half of this universe is now online and connected? 4.2 billion people are connected as we speak. Over 3 billion of them are broadcasting their personal information out to the world publicly. If you are a political party or a brand or a not-for-profit, what's your excuse not to listen to their voice? Why are people not doing it? Because it's a freaking mess. That's why people don't do this. Because that data... For starters, is photos and videos, and you can't make sense of it. It doesn't fit into a relational database. The data is in the unstructured text. It's in over 90 languages. That's why people can't make sense of it. Now, what if you're able to listen to it? And what if you're able to convert that unstructured data into structured insights. And what if, step number two, you could learn all of this in real time? And what if you could take what you've learned about your product, about your customer, about that person, about that segment, about that piece of content, about that campaign, about that product you just launched, about the issue that you just had? What if, if you could take that view of the customer and put it out into every customer facing department into your marketing into your advertising into your research teams into your sales teams and into your customer care team how would it change everything and what if you could facilitate all of these customer facing teams to collaborate with each other so that the customer sally mary jim tom that customer, whether you're B2B or B2C, that customer could see Intel, could see Microsoft, or see Dell, or see Lenovo, or see Apple, or see JP Morgan Chase, instead of thinking they're talking to a customer service representative who's working in Nebraska for JP Morgan Chase in retail, or in Xbox, working for Xbox, or working for Office 365. If you could do that, if you could bring that data into the front office, and if you could use that information to personalize every time you engage with your customer, if you know that person, and you could do everything to make their experience better, would that translate to a happier customer? Would that translate to more revenues for you? Would that translate to 
reduce costs for you? Would that translate to better be, being able to better manage crisis for you? Let's dive deep into what we call as the listen, learn, and engage system. It starts with listening to every piece of data that's out there. Blogs, forums, Twitter, anything that's public on, date, uh, on Facebook, anything that's public on LinkedIn, let's pull all of that in. Everything that's available on your own account, on your website, on your call center, on your chat, messaging apps, let's pull it all together. Let's convert that using artificial intelligence and machine learning and text analytics into structured insights. Let's combine that with the customer's permission. By the way, when you're pulling data, we live in a GDPR, California privacy world. The foundation of privacy is ask customer for permission, tell them how you're going to use it, give them the control to revoke that access. If you're doing that with legally available data and you're marrying it with the customer's permission to the operational data that you have with them, about them, and create a 360 degree view, and then bring it to every part of your customer facing organization, what we refer to as the front office, the marketing team, the advertising team, the care team, the research team, the sales team, and enable them on a single instance architecture, enable them to collabor collaborate with a unified set of governance rules, automation rules, unified AI models across your front office. And then empower them to create content in real time that's personalized for each one of your customers. And then engage these customers for marketing, for advertising, for research, for sales, for care, across 35 social channels. This is exactly what Sprinkler does. Listen, learn, and engage. We listen to 2.5 quintillion bytes of data that's being generated in the public social web. We make sense of it, make it available to every part of your front office. We've built a unified platform that allows people to collaborate and take better care of their customers. We work with nine of the world's most 10 valuable brands. We practically work with most leaders in most of these industries. Most of them don't let us put their logo up there. We are a our leader in most analyst reports, if not all of them. And most importantly, we ranked number one by our client base and our prospects. Coming up on 10 years, the company is based out of New York City. We've grown quite rapidly, 1,400 people in 24 offices around the world. We, this year, we should do north of $300 million in revenue. Um, we speak 20, 27 languages, um, and uh, you know, we raised $240 million, give or take. And most importantly, for today, uh, Intel Capital is a Series B investor, a sprinkler, and a big uh, shout out to the Intel Capital team. Thanks for being such a supportive partner. And we are literally partnering up with the entire enterprise ecosystem, from the Exchanges of the world and the Deloitte's of the world, the Microsoft's world, down to all the social channels. We've acquired 11 companies, and we threw away the code in all 11 cases, rebuilt it into a true platform for the front office, like what SAP did in the back office, or like what Workday did with the employee ID in the back office. But what I'm more thrilled about and excited about every day is not what we do, and it's not what we are today. It's really who we really are. Our vision is to create the world's most loved enterprise software company. Not to be the biggest, not to be the fastest growing, the world's most loud, loved enterprise software company. We love to do what Sappos did in retail in enterprise software. And we can kind of agree that enterprise software is not exactly an industry where everyone loves those companies. Our mission is to enable every organization on planet Earth to make their customers happier. Now, we don't know whether we can make everyone happy because people got so many things going on in life. But we know we can make them happier. How do you make anyone happier? If I want to make Tammy happier tomorrow, I have to know what she cares about, what really makes her happy. How do I do that? By listening deeply. And then I have to demonstrate that I really care for her. 
her being able to engage her when and where she wants to be engaged, which is in modern channels. Our values are near and dear to us. We learned it the hard way after veering away from it for a year. We call it the sprinkler way. We don't respond to fear. We don't create fear. We grow brick by brick. You know, we, we don't want to hit the lottery. We just keep making progress every day. We want to be fixers, not complainers. We don't give up ever. And we do it not because we want to be bigger and brighter, but because we passionately and genuinely care about everything we do. And the way we measure our success is the same way. We don't use net promoter score. It's not like, hey, would you recommend us? It was not about us, and it is not about us. It's really about you, the client. So we ask our customers on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with what we do for you? And if it's not a 10, we ask them, what are the top three things we can do to make it a 10? We call it our happiness index. So we have a customer happiness index, a employee happiness index, a platform happiness index. Notice how I couldn't tell you the company names. They won't let me do that. But I can tell you what we've done for ourselves. We deployed Sprinkler end-to-end, -end, shut down all marketing tools, shut down Zendesk, shut down Marketo, shut down Asana, everything. We reduce our marketing costs, operational costs 30%. Increase our pipeline, a B2B company, 600%. Increase our time to resolve, reduce the time to resolve a customer issue by 72%, we did it less than in a year.